Hello, my name is Radek Kucharski and I'm going to speak about the Everest Base Camp and Kalapata Trek. It is 18 May 2020 and of course more, uh, most of us we are locked down because of the coronavirus. Uh, it is the time when uh, the pre-monsoon uh, spring season is going on in Nepal and for me it is the first spring trekking season since 2015 which I'm not spending in Nepal in the Everest region and uh, of course I miss the place much so I thought uh, I would uh, show some fo uh, watch some photos and uh, show you some photos of the region and I hope you will enjoy that before I start I want to uh, say a few words about myself about myself I uh, I work as a tour leader on trekking trips mainly on the trekking trips in the Himalayas and I'm also the author of uh, two guidebooks published by uh, by Cicerone in uh, in the UK. Uh, one one is about trek uh, about trekking in Ladakh. The other one is about trekking in the Everest region. And the second one has its Polish edition um, published just recently by Sklep Podróżnik. Um, so I'm the lucky one to 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 be in the Everest region. Uh, uh, often, uh, it's usually twice twice a year. Uh, of course, for most of those who love to trek in the mountains or hike in the mountains. Looking at the Everest at the, at the highest mountain in the world from this point, which is Kalapata, or being in the Everest base camp is a dream. Uh, and uh, for those lucky who manage to be there or to go there, the trekking usually starts in Lukla. Lukla, uh, which is which is a small town located in the Dutkoshi Valley, um, uh, which uh, is is the place where where the uh, nearest airport nearest to Everest uh, on the Nepali side is located. From here, you can walk up to. Everest Base Camp or to Kalapata and back in 11 days. So it, it, it enables trekkers to do the dream trip in three weeks, including all the flights from their home country. Uh, for those who have more time, there are other options. Or for those who do not uh, don't like to fly, there are other options. Uh, you can uh, you can start the trek in in Giri, which is the classic starting point of the trek to the Everest base camp or in the Everest region. But it takes around seven days to get to cover the way between uh, Giri and Lukla, so it extends the trek for. Uh, extends the track significantly and uh, there's also another place called uh, Saleri of Aflu which is around three days walk from from Lukla and now on from that side uh, the road is under construction so it will be less walking to get to Lukla but still it takes uh, takes lo uh, a lot of time to drive to each of that point so anyway Lukla airport is and will be for for coming years the most convenient place to start the trek however uh, Lukla as you probably know is 
um, considered to be one of the most dangerous airports in the world. It is located, the airport and the, the runway of the airport is located on the slope, on the mountain slope, high uh, above the Dutkoshi River. And uh, on one side, the runway finishes with a wall. And uh, on the other side, uh, on the other, or the, uh, on, on the other end of the air, airstrip is uh, the, the, uh, the slope uh, becomes steep and uh, the runway just drops. So, uh, so the aircraft has um, very short distance either to stop the stop uh, uh, while landing or to to get enough speed to to be able to take off but of course uh, uh, it luckily happens without any problems in most of the cases but uh, the airport is weather dependent so uh, just simply, if the weather is not good, uh, the and, uh, the flights do not operate, the aircraft, do, the, the 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 companies do not operate the flights, so uh, delays are very 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 common. And if you plan the trek, you need to consider that. Uh, for those who are lucky to get to that place in clear weather like this just after the arrival you have this beautiful view of the Dutkoshi valley we are facing up valley now towards Everest on the left hand side is Karilung which uh, belongs to Rolvaling Himal and the one the mountain ahead uh, is Nupla and these are uh, this is the first view first impression that the trekkers who start in Lukla have uh, for usually those who arrive at Lukla start the trek on the same day and it takes uh, the, the, I'm going to speak now about the, the, the main route course if you as I said you can walk here up here and uh, I might do another presentation about the Jiri to um, to Lukla uh, trekking route and I will probably do another a presentation about three passes route and both of them uh, have been um, described in my guidebook but now I'm going to tell you about the Everest, uh, the main route to the Everest base camp or Kalapatal. So uh, for the most of the trekkers, uh, the, 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 the trek starts, uh, starts here and uh, we usually start the trek on the same day, on the day of the arrival at Lukla. Just as we, as we leave Lukla soon, we have some views of first uh, Buddhist sites. Uh, it's a Buddhist re region, of course. Uh, Sherpas, who who are the main people who look, uh, the, who are the people who live in the valley, in 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 the Kumbu region, they are Buddhists, and uh, this is one of the temples on the way. Uh, that you see on the first day. There are lodges and restaurants on the way. Uh, there's plenty of them. And um, <coughs> located all, all, all along the route. What we see now is the, the, the lowest point of the track. Uh, Lukla is situated at uh, around 2,840 meters, uh, high above the the valley bottom and uh, as we start the trek we need to descend a little bit to this point which is around uh, 2560 and from this point we start to ascend 
but of course as we follow here uh, a high traverse it's rather up and down than steadily up but this is uh, this is the lowest point of the track and from here if you are lucky for the weather uh, you can you can have a first spectacular view uh, of a high mountain this is uh, this is actually not very very high because it's uh, around 6300 uh, 6, meters but uh, it's very difficult mountain it's called kusum kangaroo it was not climbed until 1991 and uh, this uh, this uh, southwest face which we are looking at now was only climbed in uh, just a few years ago in 2013 uh, so it's uh, it's uh, 1,400 meters high wall, wall climbing wall, which uh, a very difficult one, which was climbed in alpine style just recently. As we continue, we have some tiny and beautiful um, waterfalls on the way, and then another 6,000 uh, comes to the view. This is the mountain which we are going to see from different angles on the way uh, towards the Everest base camp and uh, one of the frequent companions or the, the, the companions of the trek to the base camp. It's called Tantserku uh, uh, and uh, this, uh, this again south face uh, southwest face which we are looking at was uh, climbed just recently a few years back again in the alpine style and again by the russian team and this mountain here um, which is still on the f uh, which we see on usually on the second day it's called kumbiulla or kumbila it's a holy sacred mountain for the Sherpas. Uh, Sherpas believe the guardian deity of the region uh, lives on that mountain. So this is a kind of mountain and the deity is a kind of protector of the uh, of the entire region and of the Sherpa people. And uh, uh, the, the mountain itself is sacred as I said and and uh, and uh, uh, people pay respect to it, and obviously it has never been climbed. And below that that mountain is uh, the beautiful village Sherpa village of Kum, uh, Kumjung, which we will see further on. And uh, below it is the main settlement for the Sherpas, the famous Namchu Bazaar. Uh, you can see in, on this photo, you can also see as and at the lower point, there is a line coming from like uh, level, level white line. It's uh, it is uh, uh, the footpath uh, for those who leave Namche Bazaar towards Everest Base Camp and uh, we, we cannot see uh, uh, Namche itself on this photo, but it is to the left uh, from that line. Uh, as we continue, we get to the first fork or first major fork of the valley, uh, the Dutkoshi River, which we are going to um, follow. At this point is straight ahead a little bit right afterwards and uh, the valley on the left is Bot uh, Botekoshi which leads uh, the valley leads uh, towards Nakpala and the Tibetan border and uh, up in this valley is uh, there is uh, a few beautiful villages including Tame and up this valley is Rangela on the 
uh, three passes tracking route but uh, for uh, for the Everest base camp we need to continue straight and uh, this is the place where you say, see the famous two bridges which some of you might be uh, familiar with this view and as you cross these bridges uh, after, uh, after we, we at this point we come uh, we come from the right hand side to the left and then uh, then after crossing this suspension bridge uh, now the upper one is in operate uh, in operation so as you as we cross it uh, the major part of the climb to Namsa Bazaar uh, needs to be negotiated and as you do that uh, you like just around 45 minutes or one hour after crossing the bridge you get the first view of of uh, Mount Everest at this point we are at 3100 around 3100 meters above the sea level and uh, what you see here just in the middle of this photo is Mount Everest uh, as uh, as you see it's not a clear view of the mountain uh, first it's covered with uh, it hits a it's a view between the trees and uh, secondly there's another mountain uh, just stabbing the clear view and the mountain on the first uh, which we see um, on the right hand side it's Lotse uh, the fourth highest mountain in the world and from Lotse to the left uh, there is a clearly visible ridge it is uh, Lotse uh, Nupse ridge and uh, Nupse is 7861 meters high and uh, to, to imagine the scale the lowest point on this ridge uh, which is just left of, uh, of uh, Lotse is at uh, 7500 meters more or less and uh, so, and we are at at, at three thousand one hundred more or less, and then Everest is eight thousand eight hundred fifty. So just what you see here is five kilometers high mountain from here. Uh, as we continue the ascent, the steep ascent, we after another hour or one and a half hour we get to the famous Sherpa capital, the Namche Bazaar, which is today, which today is a town of, uh, mainly a town of uh, lodges and hostels and hotels. Uh, this is, uh, this photo I took after the earthquake, which is, which can be clearly guessed as there is a new stupa in the middle it is it was still under construction when i took this picture and uh, it is not finished but uh, the previous one which was here and looked a little bit different uh, was destroyed during the 2015 earthquake which devastated nepal and to a certain extent also the everest region uh, Namche Bazar is located at uh, at the altitude of 3,400 meters plus, uh, more or less, and uh, this is a significant uh, altitude for those who come from Lukla in two days, uh, which is usually done. And uh, for the acclimatization reason, acclimatization reasons, uh, each trek, uh, everyone should stay at least two nights here, and this is what most of the trekkers do. And uh, and and of course, spending the free day 
for walking around and enjoying the views which are spectacular all around Namche Bazaar. This is uh, the, the, the look uh, to the south. It's, uh, the mountain is called with, with uh, many summits. Uh, it's called Kongde. This is an, that was a morning view. Now we have a afternoon view or late afternoon view of the Kusum Kangaroo, which, which we saw uh, earlier. This is Tanserko, which we also seen, which we have also seen earlier. And this is Tangira Gitao. But we, what, what we are coming for to Namche Bazaar is obviously, and for the trek is obviously the view of Mount Everest. And uh, there are places in Namche Bazaar, of course, where um, where Everest can be seen. And this is the place. Uh, the left hand side of this photo is quite uh, is uh, you 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 are already familiar with this part of this photo like uh, Everest like um, uh, in the middle of the photo is Lotse again with its with 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 its famous south face um, again the lowest uh, the lowest point uh, of the Lotse uh, Nupse Ridge is at uh, at 7,500 7, something and beho behind the Lotse Nupse Ridge is Mount Everest. The spectacular mountain on the right hand side is uh, Amadablam and uh, probably it would be very difficult to imagine a better place for the statue of the most famous Sherpa, Tenzing Norgay, who uh, together with Sir Edmund Hillary climbed uh, Mount Everest as the first man or first two people who climbed, they were two first two people who climbed Mount Everest. So uh, mm, there is a statue built in this at this point a uh, statue of Tenzing Norgay standing at the summit of Mount Everest with Mo Mount Everest itself uh, just behind him. Uh, as I said, uh, we usually stay two nights in, we spend two nights in uh, Namche Bazaar, spending the day for the walks uh, around, there is there, there there could be a few ideas for the uh, for the day, and uh, there is a lot of spectacular views. This is uh, Amadablam again. This is uh, Kusum Kangaroo seen from the way between mm, uh, Namche Bazaar. Namche Bazaar is on the right hand side below us, and above us on the left. Or behind us is a beautiful village, the Sherpa village Kumjung, and on the way there is a small place called Siangboche, where, as you can see, there is a airstrip. It is a grassy one, and uh, the airport, which is not operating, at least it's, it does not operate any commercial flights, so. So I said before that Lukla is the nearest airport and it is the nearest operating airport in Siangboche. There is a runway here, but uh, it is not in use, just helicopters use it. So, and uh, mm, this is the Kumjung village, uh, which is usually visited on the, uh, on the day of acclimatization. And uh, this is a kind of traditional uh, Sherpa village with 
less num with l with lower number of uh, of uh, hotels and uh, lodges as you have seen just um, ordinary buildings and this is the place where uh, Sir Edmund Hillary spent a lot of time and uh, and uh, did a lot of work he after climbing Everest he he was uh, he dedicated much of his efforts and work uh, to help the Sherpa, uh, the Sherpa people and uh, Kumjung is the place where uh, the trust uh, with the Himalayan trust which was started by him and managed by him for many years uh, has built the school and uh, and near that in another village is neighboring village is is uh, is a hospital built for, by the trust and uh, no surprise uh, there is a statue of uh, Edmund Hillary in the village and there is also in this spectacular location there is a, a stupa or monument uh, which you can see in the middle of the of the photo this is also dedicated to uh, to Edmund Hillary <coughs> Ahmad Avlam again lots and Everest again Dam Circle again a stupa a stupa is a typical Buddhist religious uh, building there is a lot of stupas on the way. Stupa called stupas are called chortens in the Tibetan language, and uh, you can see many of them mm, all along uh, all along trekking routes in in this part of Nepal. Uh, this one is located near to a small pass mm, on the way between Kumjung and uh, Namche Bazaar. Uh, this is the way to the pass with uh, with another stupa on the top and Everest just left of it and lots uh, just right of it. Uh, another view of uh, the beautiful Amadablam, lots again with its south face, Amadablam again. And uh, so, Namche uh, Bazaar. We usually spend a lot of time in a lot of time in Namche Bazaar because, uh, on the way, as uh, as I said, uh, the trek to the Everest base camp and back to Lukla from Lukla and the, uh, and back to Lukla or to Kalapata and back to Lukla is uh, usually takes. Uh, 11 days and uh, three nights out of that are spent in Namche two nights on the way up and one night on the way back so so Namche uh, is the place where most of the the main base for trekkers and as you leave it uh, heading towards Everest base camp you go by the beautiful travels as you can see here and uh, usually uh, of course usually we we start early in the morning and uh, at that time of the day it's usually clear view and uh, it's a spectacular spectacular day uh, this is uh, oh, photos those photos you that you see here I, I, I I have chosen from from many trips. So uh, the previous one was uh, autumn photo. This is this one I, I uh, clicked last spring. Uh, this is uh, this is Amadablam again. Another autumn view from the Travers, and uh, what you can see here. Uh, uh, which I didn't explain earlier. Uh, a new thing to see here is the like um, 
you can clearly see that the, the, uh, we are on the right uh, true right side of the valley um, uh, we are obviously heading up valley and uh, on that day on the day we leave Namche we need to go down to the valley bottom and then climb again on the on the small ridge we can which you can see in the middle of the photo on the top of the ridge is uh, Tangboche monastery which we will see further on and you can see clearly the steep climbing mm, and, mm, footpath which goes which leads us to to the monastery um, before before we go down yeah, we can see uh, to the valley bottom we can see that the the valley uh, splits or forks again and uh, the one to the left continues at the, as Tutkoshi and it leads to to the famous Gokyo lakes uh, another fantastic location and another valley beautiful valley with the longest glacier in the Himalayas and uh, some fantastic viewpoints and another 8000 or Cho'oyu but for the end about that trek I will do another presentation which uh, which we, you will hopefully see but uh, for the Everest base camp which we are talking about now we need to go continue to the right along the the river which is called further on Imjakola. at this part of the track we often see uh, some wild animals these are Himalayan tars and as you can see we we gradual, gradually uh, descend here if we are there in spring as now this is the day of the to enjoy rhododendrons as you uh, as you can uh, as you probably know rhododens rhododendrons grow in the Himalayas at a certain altitude and this is uh, this is the uh, altitude we are crossing on the day um, on the way from from Namche Bazaar to Tengboche and there is a feast of blooming rhododendrons if you are there <coughs> in spring sorry as we finish the climb we get to the Tengboche monastery which is the biggest and probably most famous of the monasteries in in uh, the in the Kumbu region uh, but it's by far not the oldest one some of the trekkers uh, stop here for the night but I personally prefer another place which is around 20 minutes farther along the route and a little bit at a little bit lower altitude which has absolutely fantastic views both in the evening and in the morning of course if weather depends uh, uh, if uh, weather allows this is uh, lots uh, which it, uh, we with its south face uh, seen at sunset this is Everest rising above the Everest uh, uh, rising about the lots and oops reach at sunset again and this is sunset the moment when uh, when all the mountains around are already dark and uh, and uh, Everest is still lit by the setting sun and this is Amadablam just after the sunset when the illumination still uh, uh, leads the, uh, the mountain and this is another view on a cloudy evening 
uh, or cloudy afternoon part of the uh, Abdablam's face in the window of the cloud and another spectacular view is, or, yeah, or spectacular views from Deboche uh, uh, we also have in the morning of course that was Amdablam and mm, this is Everest lit by the rising sun I say abracadabra when I see this photo and this is the same moment but wider angle with Everest on the left hand side and uh, lots uh, uh, in, in the middle and that's the view down the valley from Deboche on the left hand side on the ridge you can see a red building which is uh, uh, Tengboche Gompa we are still in Deboche, Deboche is uh, spread along along the route there are uh, a few lodges quite uh, relatively quiet places and uh, the the mountain behind is is uh, Kong there which we saw from from Namche Bazaar uh, as we continue we obviously uh, ascend gradually in this point uh, we approach Amadablam and we approach another village, next village, which is called uh, Pangboche. Pangboche, which is um, which uh, consists two parts, the upper one and the lower one. The, the main route passes the lower one, but it's worth going to the upper as well, as there is the uh, the oldest monastery or gompa uh, in the region in the region this is the red building here and uh, it is famous for the for the yeti skull and uh, and uh, hand which is uh, which is a kind of treasure in the monastery and which is shown to the visitors for a small amount of money so if you want to if you want to see some parts of the yeti's body you can you need to come here and uh, Pangpoche is usually just passed on the way up but uh, but it's definitely worth more attention as it's first of all as it has fantastic views of Amadablam and Everest and lots uh, uh, particularly in the in the evenings but there is uh, uh, there are a few uh, fantastic viewpoints around Pangpoche and that includes um, Amadablam base camp which is a few hours uh, from uh, from Pangpoche a few hours walk from Pangpoche and uh, and uh, out of the main route i'm not going to talk uh, talk about that now but uh, I, I will probably do another presentation about the uh, interesting viewpoints around the main uh, around the main route to the Everest base camp this and uh, it is another uh, look of Amadablam, of course another view down the valley and uh, another view up as you can see from Pangboche we 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 head towards Everest and towards Lotz and towards the great wall of Nupce and Lotz and eventually the uh, Everest will disappear uh, uh, soon after leaving Pangboche but this this photo is still from Pangboche as you can see that uh, Everest is still seen be behind the uh, uh, Lotz and Upsa face and uh, the next settlement here is um, Somare uh, which is just above 4000 meters 
and uh, as we pass it uh, we can see another fork of the valley uh, for the uh, Everest base camp we need to go to the left uh, but the valley on the right hand side Imjakola Valley the upper part of the Imjakola Valley uh, has fun is another fantastic place for for exploration and um, just near to the fog there are, on both sides there are, uh, the settlements where trekkers usually stop for the another uh, for another night and on left hand side is Periche which is just on the main route to the Everest base camp and on the right hand side is Dingbuche uh, and I usually prefer to stop in Dingbuche on the way up and I usually pass uh, Periche on the way down and uh, as we uh, as we uh, for the acclimatization reasons it is recommended to stop in either in Dingbocha or Pericha for two nights and do some explorations around those places so I usually do it in, in uh, Dingbocha and that's what probably most of the truckers do and uh, uh, this is the fork of the valleys if you look in the middle of the, uh, of the photo you can see a tiny path climbing up a mountain it is uh, trekking mountain or, or a hill in fact which is a little bit above 5000 meters high uh, it is one of the options for the acclimatization day and it's called Nangar Shang uh, at this point we still uh, continue our walk towards Dingbuche and this Dingbuche itself uh, as I said it's it, the place has fantastic location and the dom what dominates here is the south face of Lotse the impressive impressive uh, huge mm, mm, mountain face right of it uh, is uh, Schartze and then in the middle of the valley uh, is Imjotse, but known as uh, Island Peak. It is a trekking peak and quite popular trekking trekking peak. It uh, it is a six thousander. Uh, it's uh, it, it is around a little bit less than six thousand two hundred meters high. And it's a popular peak for the for the commercial uh, expeditions. And the, there is beautiful mountain, the pyramid right of it is called um, uh, Chapolu. Uh, of course, mm, beautiful views both in morning and in the evening where the permits. Uh, this one is uh, Taboche. Uh, interesting. Uh, 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 matter. Um, this is another view, morning view. This is uh, uh, Chorten, which is above the f uh, above the village. Uh, lots uh, in the evening. Uh, Island Peak and Chapolo in the evening lots again and this is the view down the valley with Kong there and and uh, Numbur behind it and Karilung down the valley Karilung which we saw from Lukla and Dingbuche seen from from the way to Nangarshank the peak above it uh, and this is uh, uh, this is one of the reasons that it's worth climbing Nangarshang, or at least doing a part of the climb. Uh, 
as uh, from the from that point you can see we can see uh, another uh, 8000 uh, this is fifth mountain in the world it's makalu just in the middle of the photo and uh, what i usually do with groups we we on the acclimatization day as we uh, consider climbing Nangar Shank a little bit risky for the acclimatization. I believe we, as we come from Dingboche directly from Deboche, we don't have proper acclimatization to do the climb of Nangar Shank. We usually uh, explore the upper part of Imjakola Valley and, uh, and enjoy the views all around. Uh, there is another another settlement in the valley which is at uh, the altitude of around 4,700 meters, and we usually get to that point and walk down back to Dingboche for the night, and uh, and on that route we pass this monument which is Chorten, which is. Uh, dedicated to lots of South Face heroes, and it's commonly known as uh, Kukuczka Chorten. It is dedicated to three Polish climbers who died um, trying to climb this South Face of uh, of Lotz. South Face Lotz South like Lotz. Uh, uh, is normally climbed from the other side, from the western Kum, um, from the Everest side, which is behind this, behind it. But this impressive, over four thousand meters high uh, face was one of the biggest problems of mountaineering, and all the big names of the eighties. And nineties, or, or some of the big names of the big of the eighties and nineties, including Kukuczka and uh, Reinhold Messner, uh, were trying to climb it, and uh, uh, Kukuczka died on on his attempt in nineteen eighty nine. And this is uh, this is the place dedicated to him and to other Polish climbers, as I said, who died on another expeditions of the of uh, Lotse. Uh, this is Chukung itself, another fantastic place for the for the uh, for the views and uh, for the exploration. If you have more time, there is uh, there is uh, Chukungri. Uh, which can be um, compared with Kalapata uh, for for many reasons. For me, it's more interesting than Kalapata, although you don't see Everest from there. Uh, but and but I'm not going to speak about it now, as we are heading towards Everest base camp. Uh, so on the following day, we usually <coughs> leave Dingboche. Oh, we return from Chukung to Dingboche on the following, and on the following day, we leave leave Dingboche to move to Lobuche, and we do so um, following a beautiful high traverse with fantastic views of uh, of. Tengpoche and uh, uh, Cholatsa, as you saw on the previous photo, and uh, Lobuche East, as you can see here. Uh, Lobuche East, which is the mountain here, is another another quite popular but difficult uh, so-called trekking peak. Uh, uh, which you can climb on on a commercial expedition um, organized uh, by the local companies and 
And uh, below the traverse we follow here is uh, Ferice, the other settlement, which we use really pass on the way down. This is the way uh, in the valley bottom, which I usually follow on the way um, from from the Everest base camp. But now we continue by the travels and uh, and another beautiful mountain comes to the view soon. It is Pumori. Uh, I always I often joke with groups and we we make a kind of we usually have a kind of uh, argument uh, which is the most beautiful mountain of the region and for most of the people it is uh, Amadablam and I then I usually say <laughs> Pumori is the one and um, <laughs> of course uh, everyone can have uh, uh, his own or her own opinion and it's uh, it's difficult to judge that uh, but but no doubt Pumori is one of the most beautiful here and you, we will see it again further on uh, on that day we we pass Dukla uh, a place with with two or three lodges and some restaurants and uh, a place where most of the trekkers stop for lunch and after this place there is a major climb uh, to um, major climb and steep climb uh, and not not the, not a long one but uh, but a steep one and uh, considering acclimatization uh, considering the altitude and not really proper acclimatization that most of the trekkers that most of the trekkers do not have full acclimatization at the, being at this point of trek so it's uh, usually uh, tiresome and uh, and uh, particularly if we are not very lucky for the weather and what we uh, what we climb here is is uh, actually a terminal moraine of the famous Kumbu Glacier. And uh, once we finish the major part of the climb, we get to the place which is called Tokla or Tukla or Tokla, uh, which is not really a pass. Or also, although sometimes is marked as a pass but rather a place where the angle of the of the ascent changes but this is a pretty important place where uh, you will find a lot of monuments dedicated to those who died trying to climb Mount Everest and there are some big names over there and uh, this 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 small uh, monument is dedicated to to one of the doctors who one of the people who died in 2015 during the earthquake when in a few minutes after the earthquake a huge avalanche hit uh, the base camp and uh, killed and many people and uh, the person the woman who who to uh, whom uh, the monument is dedicated was doctor of one of the expeditions and uh, Tokla has is also another fantastic viewpoint uh, the mountain on the left we we are looking down the valley uh, now the mountain on the left is is uh, Amadablam which can cannot be recognized easily as we look at it from different angle, but it is Amadablam. Uh, on the right hand side is uh, is Kangtenga, Kangtega, and this beautiful panorama of all the beautiful six thousanders between them. Uh, the significant one, uh, which is the nearest to Amadablam, with a beautiful rock face. This is the uh, 
northern rock, rock face it's called Malampulam uh, it is very difficult mountain which was climbed just once or twice and uh, and uh, the the northern face north face which we see here has never been climbed so there is a lot of a lot of um, uh, possible aims in the region in the famous region still for for climbers this is uh, this is Chalatse and uh, we head towards towards Everest Base Camp now. Uh, on the right hand side, the hill here is the moraine of the Kumbu Glacier. The Kumbu Glacier is behind it, but there is a valley between the mountain slope and the glacier where. Uh, where the next settlement is located, it's called Labuche. The mountain on the left hand side is Pomori, then uh, Linktren and uh, Kumbuts uh, closing the valley. And then uh, we get to uh, Labuche, which is located at uh, altitude of over 4,900 meters and of course has fantastic panorama um, particularly this there are fantastic views of of uh, marvelous views of of uh, pumori from that point but what dominates here is uh Nupce. Nupse, which uh, obscures the view of uh, Everest now. We cannot see Everest from here. We need to continue a little bit to, to get a little bit behind Nupse. But Nupse has fantastic look, uh, particularly in the evening, if you are lucky for the weather. And I was a few times, as you can see. And Pumori uh, looks outstanding in the evening from here too. And this is after the sunset at moonrise. And on the following day, we we continue up the Kumbu Valley, and uh, the things to come to be considered when when you are the uh, I personally do not like to uh, push uh, to move for the night any higher than Labuche for the acclimatization reasons uh, actually you should spend two nights in Labuche before moving any higher so uh, what uh, what I usually do with the groups, we just wake up before we leave Lobuche before the, before sunrise, uh, go to Gorakshep, which is the highest um, settlement with uh, with lodges, and uh, and uh, climb Kalapata and return to Lobuche for the night, which is the safest way uh, to. To do but some trekkers sleep in Lobuche. Anyway we are now uh, approaching uh, Lobuche. There is a glacier to, to the or glacier moraines to, to be crossed on the way. As you can see uh, uh, there is quite a lot of people here and the mountain on the left hand side is Pumori as you probably recognize now Below it, there is small rocky hill with a clear path leading to its top, and this is Kalapata. And uh, the base camp is farther to the right, farther up valley, and uh, this is Kalapata and Pumori again. 
this is the point where you cross the moraines and the glacier and many people over there on the left hand side just at the margin of the of the photo there is uh, Gorakshep, the, uh, the last settlement in the valley located at uh, around 5170 meters above the sea level uh, what you can see down on the right is the famous Kumbu glacier you as you continue up the valley you can see uh, it turns right before the uh, the valley closes and at the curve there is uh, there is space camp not seen here uh, the lower the lowest po po point uh, in front in the middle of the photo is Lola and the pass uh, and uh, behind this uh, behind it it's uh, Changtse which is already in Tibet and the mountain what what looks like a mountain on the right hand side it's uh, it's uh, Everest's uh, west shoulder it it is not the top of Everest uh, from this point uh, on this photo we don't see Everest but from this point just occasionally the tiny a small part of of Everest can be seen uh, and uh, from the way to the Everest base camp from some par points a uh, small part of the Everest top can be seen and this is the Everest base camp it as you can see it's located on the uh, on the glacier just below Lola just before below uh, Kumbutse which is on the left hand side in a dangerous location in case of uh, of uh, big uh, snowfall or uh, earthquake as it, as it happened in uh, 2015 when the uh, earthquake caused the huge avalanche with which hit the base camp causing some uh, casualties from some port parts of the uh, from, from from the base camp you can clearly see uh, uh, the, uh, that the Kumbu glacier turns sharply right and uh, it turns and then starts its uh, um, steep part the famous glacier the, the famous Kumbu icefall one of the most dangerous parts of the route to the Everest top uh, but you can hardly see Everest from the base camp from some parts of the base camp you don't see Everest at all from some parts of the base camp you see just a small part of Everest and uh, if you if you come here at uh, in 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 spring there is a lot of lot of lots of lots of um, tents and uh, as uh, as spring is the uh, main climbing season for Everest and if you come here in autumn there is hardly anyone or hardly any climber or no climbers at all uh, just and uh, and the only sign of the base camp is the the uh, simple chort and no simple simple place marked with the prey flags and the look up from that point the huge what looks like a huge mountain in the middle is as i said before just the west shoulder of the everest and you can see a small small part of the of of the, of the everest summit just right of it uh, 
I usually say if if you of course if you have enough time you can do both uh, go to the Everest base camp and climb Kalapata but if you have if you are short of time and uh, and you need to choose the choice is for uh, for Kalapata uh, this is this is uh, Gorakshep again the highest uh, highest settlement with lodges as I said it's located uh, uh, at the altitude of over 5150 70 uh, as I said before the way towards the Everest base camp is to the right and to the left is Kalapata as you climb it it is around two two and a half hours of quite a steep but steady uh, climb it is um, not technical at all matter of uh, of uh, of the altitude uh, but as you climb it the the views open up very quickly and soon after leaving uh, Gorakshep, you get very clear and beautiful view of the Everest summit. And uh, you can also see clearly uh, uh, the famous, uh, the famous Kumbu um, uh, Icefall. This is clearly the autumn view as the base camp cannot be seen here you will see on another photos that uh, that the the base camp is on the on the band uh, at at the place where the where the glacier turn, turns this is the view down the valley you might be surprised to know that the mountain on the left hand side is uh, is uh, Amadablam uh part of the route again with Pumori above it and the base camp in the spring view and the views from the top uh, of Kalapata. Kalapata has two summits the, the, the upper one and the most frequently climbed these days is around 5640 something meters high and from the very top you you see Everest summit not only the Everest summit but also the uh, uh, south call uh, where where the highest camp for those attempting to climb the summit on the normal route is located and right of the south call is the, the ridge rises again towards uh, towards Lotse but the, um, and the, the mountain on the right hand side of the photo is is Nupce. Uh, another view And another view, and uh, I wish we look at Everest. We can look at Everest again, or I can look at Everest from this point again this autumn. And I wish all the mountain lovers to be able to go there very soon as the. Uh, hopefully coronavirus will disappear uh, before another trekking season and before I finish I, I, my, I, I was not uh, going to tell you anything about uh, um, or n n the intention was not to speak about the technical things uh, to organize the track just to show you some photos um, of the beautiful mountains on the way 
but uh, I'm going to tell you, I, I want to tell you just things. Um, uh, most of the trackers do take, do use porters for the tracks. Uh, you can see uh, trackers in walking in front of the porters on, in this, on this photo. And the trackers go with small bags and uh, the porters uh, go with these enormously huge bags. And uh, my request for you is, please do not do like that. Uh, some companies and some people argue uh, one tracker, one porter policy. Uh, I argue one tracker, one bag policy. And uh, if you if you walk as a couple, and uh, you can you can uh, pack your stuff in one backpack or one uh, comfortable bag, which can be comfortably carried by the porter, and it's not heavy. Uh, uh, if it's around fifteen up to twenty kgs, that's fine. Uh, you can uh, take one porter for both of you, but <coughs> but please don't use the porters like like this. They are not superheroes. They are not. They they can get sick on the way. You can get sick on the way, and you can need your porter to carry your small bags as well. A small bag as well. Uh, so and uh, and uh, what we need to uh, to do in the mountains is respect the environment and respect the other people on the trail so that definitely includes the local people so <clears throat> uh, please do not overuse the porters and uh, another thing is uh, Another basic thing you need to consider before the trek is is the management of water. Of course, we we need to drink a lot of uh, a lot of water while trekking, especially particularly in the high mountains. But uh, although bottled water is available all around along the routes, uh, you need to consider that if you buy bottled water. Uh, most probably the plastic will never be uh, taken out of the region or uh, and it most probably it won't be used in any uh, it will just simply pollute the region so uh, if it doesn't pollute the region it even if it's taken away it will pollute Nepal or India uh, so uh, and there is a lot of pollution in the region now there are organizations which uh, are trying to manage that the problems but the best the best thing to do is just to limit the use of single-use plastic and uh, there, are, there are many ways to do so uh, there are filters there are, there are tablets to purify the water of course, the water just is that you that you take just from the tap or from the spring it's it's not really safe, so we need to proceed uh, the water in one way or another but <coughs> but uh, please consider that and uh, uh, please limit the use of single use plastic, particularly in the region. what I've been using in Recent year, uh, in recent years, uh, recently, is the water to go uh, filter system. Uh, so you can start with that, but any other uh, on a, any other uh, solution which uh, will save some single-use plastic would be best and if you if you 
uh, use one of the methods instead of buying the bottles with water and leaving the bottles behind you, I would be grateful. Thank you very much for listening. I hope you came to that point and uh, you enjoyed uh, watching the photos with me. If uh, you want to see one of the photos on your wall of your office or at home, you can visit uh, my shop at Pickfur where you can find uh, uh, where you can buy the photos license for using the photos or or you can order prints of the photos if you are an uh, Instagram user you can just click it now uh, click my uh, find me on on Instagram and follow me over there uh, you can on the left hand side you have uh, you have three addresses of my websites and uh, on the right hand side you have uh, the website where my publishers websites where you can buy the um, uh, uh, the guidebooks I have written uh, and uh, and also if you want to travel with me I work mostly with explorer.pl so if you want to go with me to the mountains, to the Himalayas, please visit that website. Thank you very much for listening and uh, check my other presentations which will come soon. Thank you very much.